right. Oh, yeah. And there's there's certain laws to seek asylum. Yeah. Let's follow the laws that are on the books. Mm -hmm. That's all we're saying. Okay, that's all I've ever said. She followed immigration laws. If you did a research of Mexico's immigration laws, oh, you would be bad. calling Mexico racist. Okay? You literally go to jail. You cannot. You go to Here's prison. one thing. You cannot protest in Mexico carrying an American flag. You will go to jail. I'm so sorry. My, it's shaking and I don't want to. Okay, sorry. Just, okay, if I lose <laughs> okay. me, okay. Keep going. I just want to like regroup so that yeah, I can use the shot. There's six pages of racist immigration on the books in Mexico. Okay? We don't discuss that. All we're doing is in the United States is enforcing the laws that have been on the books. There's no new laws that have happened. Not one. Not one new law has been enacted on immigration policy. Was that all you're gonna say? You got more questions? <laughs> um, okay, so I guess my last question that I want to ask was about um, humane treatment if family like is there any un, uh, like unhumane uh, treatment going on right now? Well, I guess my question is, okay, so it isn't that... I'm trying to figure out if people do think it's humane or inhumane when they, when the family separation thing was happening. Sorry, I'm going to turn this off. Um, See, so, everybody is talking about that family separation. Well, here's the thing. Like it or not, it's been happening in our country. You break the law, you get sent to jail, sorry, to, to prison, that's separating you from your children. It's been happening. It's the same thing with the porter. It hasn't changed. And you break the law are, by the coming in illegally. The kids over, but not the here's the other problem. The only reason why they're doing that, separating parents from children, to make sure that it's, because we have a guy that works in ICE building, and he said they treat them good. They get toys, they get donations and everything. And you know, the politicians are trying to paint this picture in, uh, in people's head that they're being treated bad. No, these kids are being treated nice but the only reason why they separate them because there is a lot of child trafficking going on from that illegal crossing some parents in mexico sells their children to traffic you know to, to, to sex trafficking and everything that's why they separate them to make sure it's a guarantee that that person that brought the child to the border is the right parent then they're going to do their job but they're not separating kids and then treating them like animal or anything if you go in these facilities they have bids they have they have three Ooh. meals a day. They get donations and everything. These kids are treated treated way better than the life that they came from. So I don't know what people are talking about. This whole child separation and everything. So it has the been follow up. Going on for a so while. the not, yeah. just this, not just this administration. It's been going yeah. on for quite a bit. So okay. So my last follow up, I think, is this: is um okay. So when when um people are because there's been a lot of comparison about when people go to jail compared to family separation, right? But um so when what, sorry, I'm gonna get better light on you. When people You're too dark. <laughs> no, that's just the hat. The hat blocks people's eyes sometimes because the light changes. Oh, no, it's okay. So, uh, so um, when people are separated and go to jail, oftentimes kids will go into like foster homes and things like that. And so, as a person who talks to a lot of different protesters and all different sides, the one argument I've heard is that it is that it's different because. The kids are being held, you know, where they were with the chain, chain link fences and everything. And so, um, like, in the bigger facilities. And so I guess my question is, is the comparison really the same? What do you mean? To say that it's the same as a child. You know that chain uh, picture that everybody saw? You know that's fake, kids? Right? No, no, no. That one is true. But that is the new kids that they just, but that's the facility they hold them until they they search everything, then they send them to the to the side where they have beds and everything. But they want to bring these pictures because it fits their narrative. That's why they bring those pictures. Even the other picture that they brought, it was a protest that went on outside, and they brought it out and they apologized for lying about it. They were like, "Oh, we didn't know it was a protest, so I'm sorry. It just looked like it fit our narrative, so we brought it in." That's wrong. Go go to these ice facilities. They allow you to go in there, and they, and you'll see, you'll see. You'll see what how these kids are treated. They're treated really good. Because we have a brother that 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 that's in our organization that works for ICE. 
and he deals with these kids and he said he feels bad for most of them because they share their story about they're not even like those are not their parents that brought them across the board those are coyotes mm -hmm. so they should be happy that we're at least like helping these kids out we're not treating them like bad people or anything because we're not blaming the kids for what the parents did thank you for talking to me about it I, I am. I'm, I'm making. I'm hoping to make a documentary series about I just don't like the lies. Anymore. Kind of, you know, because more people talk. Yeah. About it, I think it's That's why they hate me when I speak because it doesn't fit the narrative. A picture. You want me to take it? I got long arms. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you, Tiny, for talking to me. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, Tiny. Excuse me. I noticed. Sorry. Go ahead. I noticed you didn't bring up the thing about the uh, U.S. Supreme Court rulings, uh, basically forcing Trump to, to do what he does. Mm -hmm. um, there was a Supreme Court ruling that ruled that they can't uh, keep their kids' parents away from kids for 20 days. But there's also a Supreme Court ruling that ruled that kids cannot be held in detention. So, they, so they're turned over to the Department of Human Services. I'll look into that. I'll look into yeah. that. What's up? So, um, I know who Joey is. I'm, I'm Tanya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Chris. So first of all, I really respect what you guys do. I'm a fan. Thank you. Well, sort of. I only learned about you a couple days ago. But in my research, I'm a fan. Because I found out about you because a guy, a friend of mine, says, Oh my god, the Nazis are building Castle Wolfenstein at local colleges. And I'm here to find out whether or not that's true. Uh, do you mind if I record? All right, this is a horrible ancient potato phone, so I can't promise audio. You're good, you're good. <laughs> I don't want to see the data All right, we're, we're live. I'll be behind you. Okay, so you're a member of Patriot Print. Yes, sir. Excellent. Hi, everybody. So, are you a white supremacist? <laughs> um, first of all, let me introduce myself. Um, my real name is Tusitala Johnson. Um, everybody calls me Tiny because they always mispronounce my name. Respectable. So, um, and as you can see, like I said when I was on the stage here, stage, that I am a coconut. And if you look at a coconut, a ripe one, it's not white. It is brown. And that's what you see here. So if we are, me and Joey and our organization, are really white supremacists, then I, I'm sorry for doing a really bad job on trying to be white supremacists. Because we're far from that. <laughs> we're really far from it. Alright, and if I can speak to the camera for a second. Steven, uh, the Nazi party has really expanded their recruitment. I'm shocked. Alright, I think I got what I needed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry about that. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. I get a little bit of, you know. Yeah. People waking up time. People waking up. Okay. Simple as that. Just come out and let's talk. Jaro, let's go on the street. Let's go smoke. I need to say hello. <laughs> And sometimes people will steal stuff and you don't even know it. Oh, really? Right, or yeah, you don't have it all itemized. Uh, yeah. I'm 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 to be honest, I have so many guns and I have my guys. Yeah, yeah, Margaret. But then, if you learn your lesson, you interpret the reason for it, then you don't have to worry about it. Like you're saying, the super mom who's not aggressive, like that, that would be fine. It doesn't matter if there's someone who should not be having fire. I'm still asking for it, which is probably not going to be able to no, no, they do. Yes, it does. You have to either have a trigger lock or it has to be a If there's someone in your house that should not have access to firearms. No, that's the law right now. 
right now the law in Washington State, if you have a felon okay. living with you, you're 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 gonna have to be locked up. Yeah. That's a felon. I was saying technically yes. a felon. Uh, <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm saying like if you're just like, a mom with a okay. kid, you don't have to worry about that. That's not what the law says. It doesn't say that. Everyone has to lock up their guns. If there's someone in your that lives in your house right. that should not have access to a firearm. No, it says the kid the parents do not have No, if I'm telling you right now, I'll, I'll, I'll double check it. Okay. And you, you double check it too, but that's, I'm that's, telling you. Um, section 3, subsection yeah. 1. In section three, A, B, C, and D, all those just clear out that that's that's not really the concern. Yeah. So I just want to make sure if we're going to talk about this. Okay. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm busy. We'll have to talk in a little bit. Okay. All right. Now I'm like point zero one percent sure. But we read through it. We talked about it, and then we watching the debates too. Two sides were arguing about the same thing. One side was saying, oh, no, 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 that's not actually true. And the other side was like, yes, it is. Like, about the way that you read the way that you interpret it. It's not too long as a bill, so it doesn't take long. No, it's, it's like on page 11, listed as uh, uh, access to the farm. And then up there it says, uh, let's see, as far as uh, who can have it, it's. Uh, if the person who is prohibited from, uh, is prohibited on the basis of age, access to firearm is within the lawful permission of the prohibited person's parent or guardian. So is they're allowed to use the gun? Yeah, so if it's someone who's allowed to use the gun, you don't have to worry about keeping it locked up. That's, that's, locked that's just access. That's just saying that, that's just saying that a child's allowed to use a gun and with their parent. Right. That's different from locking it up or storing it. That's a whole different situation. But their storage is different from actually from actually using it. So there is things. So even an, if a 19 year old. Like if the mom, the if the mom is away able. from the house and her kids at home alone, well, the kids should not be able to have access to the gun. No, no. You're, just, you're doing two different things. Storage, storage is different. If the gun's not on you, it has to be locked up. Okay. What you're talking about is. So let's say then that if you are responsible gun owner and you have a 12 year old at home and you leave the house to go run there and when 12 year old's home alone. It doesn't matter. No, do you think it's a not. Yeah, it's it's worth coming to the So yeah, you'd lock up your guns if you had a kid in some that and like they were just exploring around the house, right? Yeah, or or I also have spots that are very sneaky. Right. Okay. No, but I mean, the thing is that, like, if, if you're going to be leaving this guy in the house, like, you, you want to at least make it clear that you can just travel back. That'd be reasonable. Yeah, I mean, that's common sense, but it, but it depends. That's not what the bill is talking about. If you have a brother who's in the middle, you want to make sure that you're going to park that house. That's not what the bill is talking about. That's not what the bill is talking about. Exactly. That should be not. That should be not. No, it has to be locked up, period. That should be common sense. Even if you're in the house, you're, you're, you're not even looking at storage. Yeah, no, I am. So, gun, secure gun storage, this is section 5 of the bill. Section is that a person who stores a police firearm in a location where a person knows or reasonably should know that a police firearm may be in the So, it's, if, someone, if you know that there is a prohibited, firearm prohibited person that has access to your guns, you need to lock up your guns. <laughs> I would assume outside of that, having your house locked is good enough. So, I mean, the text of your law is not really a big yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, so what, you, what, what, what they're saying, the way that it's written, the only way that you can be safe is if you have the very minimum you want to lock up. But separating your ammo and the gun isn't enough. You yeah, can at least get a trigger lock up. Even if you're home. That's not reasonable. Because then there's no, how are you going to defend your household? Yeah. Because you're going to have six guys in the door. 
and you have to sit there and find that gun. You have to keep the key separate from the trigger lock. Right? Well, you have to you go get your key. You got to sit there. I don't know if you ever use the trigger lock. No, but the thing is, I would hope it takes longer to unlock a gun. Or no, sorry. It would take longer to be able to assess the threat and see if it actually requires gun response than to go and find your gun and unlock it. No, you don't determine if it's a threat or not and then find your gun. So you have your gun on you and then you determine if it's a threat or not. Excuse me. You want to have your gun on you. Yeah, that's what people try to do. It's like wearing a seatbelt. Well, you're, 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 you're something that's carrying on you. something that's stored. If you hear someone banging on your door, okay, like trying to break it down, you don't you don't sit there and take the time to assess what's happening and then you're like, okay, I need my gun. If you hear something out of, out of that doesn't make sense, you go and you get your gun and then you go assess the situation. Or you just have your gun on you at all times. So then your worry is that the 